Hello, welcome to this lesson. We're going to talk about potentiometers. These are sometimes called POTs, especially by electronic engineers. To understand the potentiometer, you really need to understand the potential divider. I'm assuming you've seen and understood the lesson on potential dividers, but I'll quickly recap. To make a potential divider, you simply need two resistors in series. If you provide an overall voltage V across the pair of resistors, the voltage gets split or divided into two smaller voltages, V1 and V2. And V1 and V2 add to give the original voltage. There's a very useful way to work out what V1 or V2 is. It's called the potential divider formula. Let's suppose we have resistors R1 and R2 with voltages V1 and V2 and an overall voltage V. To find V1, we use the potential divider formula. We say, OK, take the original full voltage V and multiply it by the fraction of the voltage that's across the first resistor. That fraction is simply R1 over R1 plus R2. So V times R1 over R1 plus R2 gives us the value of V1. Similarly, if you wanted V2, it's the full voltage V times R2 over R1 plus R2. That's the potential divider formula, very useful. So, what is a potentiometer? Well, the simplest potentiometer you could make would simply be a piece of high resistance wire. I've shown that in red on the diagram. We connect it to a cell and the current will flow round the circuit through the high resistance wire. We have a contact at the bottom on the right a wire leading out and we have a sliding contact. That's something we can press against the red wire and slide along up or down so we're making contact at different points along that high resistance wire. Depending where, whereabouts we make contact near the top, the middle or the bottom, the voltage between the slider and the bottom wire can be adjusted. It's a variable voltage as we slide the contact up or down the red high resistance wire. Suppose I connected a voltmeter. So this time the sliding contact is attached to a voltmeter. I can actually read the voltage I'm getting along the wire. Suppose we apply a two volt cell. Then if the sliding contact is at the top the voltmeter will read the full 2.0 volts. If the sliding contact is in the middle, the voltmeter will read 1.0 volts. And if the sliding contact is at the bottom, the voltmeter reads 0 volts. And I can choose any voltage between 0 and 2 volts. So it's a good way of having a variable voltage, easily adjusted variable voltage, this sliding contact along the high resistance wire. That's a potentiometer. The diagram on the left is equivalent to the circuit on the right. If you look carefully at the left hand diagram, the sliding contact divides that high resistance wire into two parts, the part above and the part below. Each of those parts is equivalent to a separate resistor. So if you look at the circuit on the right, I hope you can see that the two separate resistors correspond to the upper and lower parts of the wire above and below the sliding contact. The right hand diagram doesn't show the fact that the circuit is adjustable, but it shows the wire corresponds to two resistors. If the sliding contact was raised up to the top, that would be the same as reducing the value of the top resistor and increasing the value of the bottom resistor because the, the length of wire corresponds to the resistance of the section of wire. So if that's a short length of wire, it's a small resistance. If this is a long length of wire, it's a big resistance. Here's a problem. Suppose we have a, a cell with 2 volts EMF 
and supposing the sliding contact is positioned so that there's a 30 centimeter length of wire on one side and a 70 centimeter length on the other and we connect the voltmeter as shown what do you think the voltmeter reading is if you want to pause the video you can try that for yourself well we can treat the length as proportional to the resistance of the wire we're assuming the wire is the same thickness all the way along nice uniform wire you could say that the resistance of the top section is 30 units it doesn't have to be ohms it's 30 units and the resistance of the bottom section is 70 units we can use the potential divider formula to find the voltmeter reading the voltmeter reading will be the full voltage across the wire which is 2 times the fraction giving the proportion that's applied to the 70 centimeter length that fraction is simply 70 over 100 because the total is 100 70 over 100 this fraction 2 times it gives 1.4 volts so if we're drawing an electronic circuit, how do we represent a potentiometer? Well, it's a symbol on the left. It's a single resistor symbol, but with a sliding contact shown. That corresponds to our example of the high resistance wire with a sliding contact. It's equivalent to two resistors connected like that, as we've mentioned a moment ago. The top part above the sliding contact is equivalent to the top resistor here and the lower part below the sliding contact is equivalent to the bottom resistor. To actually make a potentiometer or pot we don't normally have a long piece of wire we normally make them more compactly. A typical design well there's a picture on the right if you opened it up the basic com construction is a track some high resistance material often carbon based in a curved arc with a gap you have a contact wire on one end of the track another on the other end that's the top and bottom wire bottom wires on the symbol the sliding contact is rotate is turned by a spindle coming out of the pot and as you turn the spindle round it alters the position of the contact and that contact is connected to the middle wire here if you look at the picture of a typical pot you'll note there are three connections the outer ones correspond to the end of the tracks and the middle one corresponds to the movable contact often called the slider a typical use of a potentiometer is a volume control for example if you want to amplify a microphone the microphone would be fed to a preamplifier preamp to give it some initial amplification make it a rather larger voltage than just comes out of the microphone then you could have a potentiometer connected to the power amp which drives the loudspeakers and adjusting the potentiometer would alter the volume so it's a volume control in that example that's it that's basically a quick introduction to the potentiometer